Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is day six of Hidden Figures, and today's Hidden Figure is Hazel M. Johnson, who was born January 25th, 1935, and died January 12th, 2011. She was an environmental activist who is considered to be the mother of environmental justice. For more than 30 years, she led community action, pressuring local officials and corporations to clean up toxic waste and pollution in her Southeast Chicago community of Outgeld Gardens. This one is very near and dear to my heart. As a lot of you guys know, I'm very into sustainability and environmental justice. I actually heard about Hazel Johnson through the incredible intersectional environmentalist page on IG. Please check them out. Of course, I will include um, links in the description box. Johnson was born Hazel Washington in New Orleans, Louisiana on January 25th, 1935 to Mary and Clarence Washington. Growing up in the NOLA corridor of oil, oil refineries excuse me, and chemical companies known as Cancer Alley, she was the oldest of four siblings and the only one to live to adulthood. At age 11, she was sent to Catholic school after her mother became ill with tuberculosis, of which she died a year later. Her father, a truck driver, was often on the road and unable to take care of her. As a teenager, she left Louisiana with an aunt for California, where she attended Thomas Jefferson High School in Los Angeles before returning to New Orleans to live with her grandmother. She took up work in a produce factory, which is where she met her husband, John Johnson. They moved to Chicago in the mid-1950s, where they had seven children. While raising her family, Johnson worked a number of different jobs, including recruiting members to a Black American Neighborhood Association, sorting mail for the U.S. Postal Service, and working as an administrative support for parents and friends of retarded children. And just a note for you guys, that was the official name of the organization at that time, due to the fact that mental retardation was the medical term used to describe a person with an intellectual disability. The word has since been replaced medically um, by the term intellectual disability. And this particular organization is now called Parents and Friends Inc. And it is still an operating organization to this day. Johnson's daughter, Cheryl, remembers her mother as being a community-driven person who planned activities such as block parties, skating parties, or regular trips to the amusement park for her children and other youth in the neighborhood. She said that everyone called her Mama Johnson or Mama Hazel. In 1962, Johnson and her family moved to Outgeld Gardens Homes, a Southside Chicago public housing project managed by the Chicago Housing Authority. Originally built to house Black American World War II war veterans, Altgeld Gardens was situated in an industrial area with a freeway to the east, a sewage treatment center to the north, and a polluted river to the south. It was surrounded by abandoned factories, hazardous waste sites and landfills, and was built on top of a former toxic dump site. In 1969, John Johnson died of lung cancer suddenly at age 41. His death shocked his wife, then 36, and she also began to notice respiratory issues such as asthma, along with fainting spells among her children, as well as other cancer cases in the community. Johnson began investigating the impacts of the neighborhood's environmental conditions on its residents, documenting the occurrence of chronic health problems and connecting the dots between the impacts of the area's air and water pollution. Her findings led her to describe Outgeld Gardens as a toxic donut. We're sitting in the center of it and we are surrounded by all types of pollution, Johnson said in a 2009 interview with chicagotalks.org. In addition to being exposed to hazardous fumes from surrounding factories and asbestos, the community was supplied with contaminated drinking water from wells, despite paying the city for water utility services, Flint, Michigan, anyone, and was found to have the highest cancer rate in the city. Johnson's growing awareness about the impacts of environmental hazards on people's health prompted her to begin agitating for accountability from the Chicago Housing Authority. She ran for and was elected to the Outgeld Gardens Local Advisory Council in 1970, remaining in the role until 1979 when, 10 years after her husband's death, she founded the People for Community Recovery, or PCR. She was galvanized to form the organization after hearing on television of the deaths of four local infants from cancer and a news report that Southeast Chicago had one of the highest cancer rates in the nation. 
Johnson began meeting with Environmental Protection Agency officials who provided her with a health questionnaire to distribute. She made 1,000 copies of the questionnaire and circulated them around Altgeld with responses that reported a range of cancers and respiratory illnesses in residents. Incorporated as a not-for-profit organization in 1982, the PCR focused on advocacy in fighting environmental racism as it affected the residents of Altgeld Gardens public housing project. One of their first achievements was successfully lobbying the city of Chicago to test the drinking water, demonstrating the presence of toxins like cyanide, nitrogen, phosphorus, and pathogens far above EPA limits. When Johnson challenged the city on not upholding EPA regulations, the 1984 findings resulted in the introduction of new water and sewer lines to the area. PCR also partnered with universities and hospitals to conduct other independent health surveys, one of which, in 1993, found high incidences of chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases like emphysema and chronic bronchitis, with a quarter of respondents reporting asthma. The study also found that half of pregnancies resulted in either miscarriage, stillborn births, or babies born prematurely or with birth defects. And let me also say here that I hear people question all the time how Black Americans have remained at roughly 13% of the American population for so many years. But what I feel like a lot of people don't understand is how racism and environmental racism and medical racism actively contributes to deaths in our population and our low birth rates. Um, a lot of you guys know I'm also very into child care um, and maternal health and child health. Black women to this day have the highest maternal mortality and infant mortality rates in the country due to medical and environmental racism. This is a very real thing to this day. PCR's research ultimately identified 50 landfills on the south side of Chicago, along with 250 leaking underground storage tanks and more than 350 hazardous waste sites. Johnson was, Johnson, excuse me, was a fixture at government meetings and community hearings where she presented her findings and pressured city officials for improvements. She challenged the Chicago Housing Authority directly on its pollution and use of asbestos and toxic dumping, leading to the removal of asbestos and lead paint from housing complexes. She also led direct action against the local government, protesting the distribution of permits for landfills and contaminated water sources to be built on and developed without proper cleanup, resulting in a moratorium on new or expanded landfills in the city of Chicago and the enactment of laws requiring corporations to clean up their decommissioned dump sites. In 2004, PCR helped reach a $10 million settlement with the Chicago Housing Authority over residents' exposure to industrial pollutants. In October 1991, she joined fellow activists and community groups in Washington, D.C. for the first National People of Color Environmental Leadership Summit. There, they adopted 17 environmental justice principles, among them the need for urban and rural ecological policies to clean up and rebuild our cities and rural areas in balance with nature, honoring the cultural integrity of all our communities and providing fair access for all to the full range of resources. At the summit, Johnson was honored alongside 11 other women of color for their contributions to the movement, and she received the title Mother of the Environmental Justice Movement. She was given the 1992 President's Environment and Conservation Challenge Award in recognition of her environmental justice work, and two years later, in 1994, was back at the White House as a witness to the signing of Executive Order 12898, the first ever executive order on environmental justice. The order directed the EPA and federal government to identify at-risk communities and develop an environmental justice strategy. In 1996, Johnson and the People for Community Recovery were honored among the country's top 100 environmental groups, PCR being the lone black organization among them. Johnson also served as a consultant on Al Gore's climate and environmental platform when Gore ran for president and was an early mentor to future President Barack Obama, working closely with him when he was executive director of the Demel Developing excuse me, Communities Project. Johnson died of complications related to congestive heart failure on January 12, 2011, at age 75. On the day of her death, the Illinois General Assembly designated a portion of 130th Street as the Hazel Johnson E.J. Way. In February 2021, U.S. Representative Bobby Rush, whose district includes Chicago's Southside, 
reintroduce legislation to recognize her con contributions to environmental justice that would award her with the Congressional Gold Mo Medal, commission a commemorative stamp in her honor, and designate April as the Hazel M. Johnson Environmental Justice Month. Her relentless advocacy made her a fixture in local news with many profiles and news articles written about her work. Yet her impact and influence has been swept under the rug by the broader mainstream environmental justice movement, which presents as largely white centered and ignores race based environmental justice issues. There has been renewed interest in Johnson's life and work post COVID-19 pandemic as the environmental justice and climate crisis movements have garnered widespread support in the mainstream. The People for Community Recovery continues to operate today under the leadership of Johnson's daughter, Cheryl, and records regarding their activities spanning from 1935 to 2007 were donated to the Chicago Public Library for public use in 2009. Cheryl says that while her mother was not educated in the earth sciences, her advocacy and activism work was years ahead of its time. Chicago and the Midwest had been decades behind on environmental issues, she recalled. When she was advocating for the cleanup of Lake Calumet, I hope I'm saying that right, she was labeled crazy and told she didn't know what she was talking about. But she was determined, you know? And from my quote from Hazel Johnson, I have this quote here. In 1995, Hazel Johnson told the Chicago Tribune, I definitely think I've been chosen by a higher power to do this work. Every day I complain, protest, and object but it takes such vigilance and activism to keep legislators on their toes and government accountable to the people on environmental issues. I've been thrown in jail twice for getting in the way of big business, but I don't regret anything I've ever done, and I don't think I'll ever stop as long as I'm breathing. For so long, environmental activism has been primarily a white middle class issue, far removed from the daily reality of inner city life. It's all very well to embrace saving the rainforests and conserving endangered animal species, but such global initiatives don't even begin to impact communities inhabited by people of color. We have abused the planet mercilessly for years and now we are paying the price. If we want a safe environment for our children and grandchildren, we must clean up our act no matter how hard a task it might be. And that is Hazel M. Johnson, a powerful, 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 powerful hidden figure that did the work. There will be lots of information and links in the description box, so please check those out. Food for thought as always, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another hidden figure. Peace.